よくぞ。これは俺の話かなと、ひらかなと、なぐらいかな。So that's my entire Japanese exhaustive for the video. But <laughs> this is the Japanese equivalent of a scrub plane. This is the Japanese equivalent of a Japanese, well, a, a smoothing plane. And this is the Japanese equivalent of a fall plane or a tri plane, even、um, for getting a flat surface along a longer board.、Um, and I'm going to go into why these are the only three planes you really need for Japanese woodworking. Of course, there's exceptions, there's certain planes that you would like、um, for certain jobs, but these three planes alone will do the job. So, what do we have here? So, this is a scrub plane,、uh, particularly. This plane is good for taking off a lot of material at once. You'll see here that the, the actual blade is cambered. I've heavily cambered this, and it's not even、um, shiny here.、Um, I think I went to like a thousand grit to make this work, and that's all that's required, but it takes up a lot of stock quickly. It's actually somewhat essential, in my opinion, to have a Hureshi Kana, a scrub plane. Um, you might think, oh, I don't need a scrub plane. A lot of people say, just get a number four and we have it. But you really do want a scrub plane. It takes up a lot of material. It saves you a lot of work if you are going to be doing this all hand tools with nothing else. Then you've got your smoothing plane. Now, this plane is not too bad. I think personally, the mouth could be a bit tighter on this plane,、um, but I haven't got around to doing it. But it still takes a really beautiful shaving. It's fantastic. So, it's always good to have at least one smoothing plane. This is for your final finish. And lastly, my Nagadai Kana. This is a real treat. Actually, it's been quite hard to get hold of these.、Um, so, you really need to keep your eyes peeled when looking for these、uh, broad. I find eBay is、like、a decent place to find these. You might notice as well, this side is cambered,、uh, kind of like not cambered even,、uh, it's rounded over a bit.、Um, And you know, in good shape, and this side is perfectly square. And you might wonder, well, why is this square like this? Why is the, you know, there's no bevel here, this isn't smooth, this can't feel good in your hands. However, you'll also notice that this side is thicker than this side. Now, the reasons for this is because traditionally you would use this on an after die, this Japanese playing board, to slide in this motion to take off the side of stock. Which I'll probably put in a video like on top of that so you can see that now.、Um, it's exceptionally good at doing this, and you just need another Japanese planing board on top of this one to make it work. So basically, you want the extra stock on the right hand side so you can keep truing it over time to make sure it's perfectly square.、Um, that way, when you joint an edge, you can get like a nice square edge. So here we have a smaller planing board that sits on top of the a t a d a i And if you want to know a little bit more information about the a t a d a i I'm going to be making a, another video about the Japanese a t a d a i This is a planing board.、Um, this is essentially the、uh, cabinet makers or small kind of fine woodworking makers、um, equivalent of a woodworking bench for you know, Western style、um, woodworking. So, I'll go into that into another video. If, if you want to see that video, please leave a comment below. I'd love to go into it, talk about how, about how I built this, why I built this, and what I like about this, what I dislike about this. So, anyway, we have this smaller planing board. Now, you'll see it's just a plank of wood, it's, it's relatively flat.、Um, in fact, the flat you can get it, I, I imagine the better.、Uh, it could do with a bit of work, to be honest. It's a mess, this bit's broken, these sliding dovetails are broken, but you know what? It still works. This actually came from a smaller. Um, planing board I made originally, so you can see the holes here have been taken out. So you pop this on here and it hits back into these stops here. Now, if you take your piece of wood, let's say this piece of wood for example, and we want to make sure this is square, then what we would do, or what woodworkers would be doing, is they would place this onto the board slightly over this edge here. And you would take your Nagadai Kana and you can bring it all the way to the edge and push like this, or pull even, to get a nice clean shaving. Just like this. So it's, it's really efficient in this way. I absolutely love it. It'll make it flat, it'll make it square once you set it up correctly. And what you want to do is you kind of want to hold back here. In fact, can we see that on the camera? Not really. So I'm going to turn this a little bit. So, what we would like to do is you'd hold it back here 
or at the front here, and you would pull forwards, putting pressure with your hand here, until you get near to the end, at which point here, you'd want to be holding more here and pulling for that final finish. So you get it flat and uh, true along the entire edge. And that is the importance of a Nagadai Kama in, in regard to edge jointing. But obviously for the length, it can plane down boards on top and you can try to get it a bit uh, flat along the length. Now when it's such a big plane, I find it's quite cumbersome to hold. So I end up grabbing it by the by the blade, um, like so, to take shaving. Great. So we also have a, just your, your kind of bog standard, let's say, smoothing plane. What I love about this plane is this is just great for getting a nice long shaving or big shaving and nice clean shaving. Although Sapili has given me a bit of work because it has a really dodgy traversing grain. So, now lastly, let's talk about the Hiroshi, Hiroshi plane, the uh, scrub plane. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but this I've just uh, I've resawn this, and it's got a lot of uh, saw marks in. It's it's not flat at all, and in fact, to get this flat with the current Nagadai or my smoothing plane it would take a long time. It would take a long time to kind of knock down uh, the entire any high spots to the lower points on the board. So the way I go around this um, is to use a scrub plane. Of course, I could set these for a deeper cut, but that would be a pain. I would have to set it every time. Things like that can add a lot of time onto what you're doing. This will take up a lot of material quickly, like so. You may also be no noticing that I'm stood up for doing this, kind of on my knees. Traditionally, you would sit down like so, with one leg here, right leg here, and you can kind of just come in like this. And kind of row into the cup. Now, you might be able to see this is making short work of this. A bit of blockage. Now I've not completely finished this so far. However, you'll see very quickly I've knocked down a lot of the high spots. There was there's a little bit here. This is a low spot. Um, so a lot of this is it's almost uniform now, which is fantastic. This would have taken so much longer using a smoothing plane, and this is why a scrub plane is essential in my opinion. The other thing is obviously you want to make it flat along it. It's kind of width um, along like the length of this. You'd want to make it flat. So how we would go around that is I would just bring it to the edge. So you might notice as well, like this, this wouldn't be flat along like one side might be higher than the other side. So what you do is you take your scrub plane, take a, take a couple of passes here and the reason we take a couple of passes off here and put like a bevel on there is because we're about to plane this way now if we plane this way without doing this bevel we're gonna tear out and splinter off the wood it will look terrible and it will just it's just not great so once you've got that like this you can start like this and this is why i love the acid actually it gives so much room for um planing the face of wood Like so, we would traverse all the way along the board until it was flat uh, this way. Once we've done that, I'm not going to do all that right now, but once we've done that, 
We could then turn it around like this, take our Nagadai Kana and come at it like this way across until we can get the board flat. Now, that's not what this video is about. I'm not showing you how to flatten a board. Hopefully you know how to do that. If not, then maybe I can make a video on that. I know there's videos out there. There's plenty of videos on how to flatten a board, but maybe with um, Japanese hirakanas, uh, Japanese planes, you wanna see a video on that and I can do a video on that. But yeah, this is essentially my video on what three uh, Japanese planes you need and why you pretty much only need those planes. Essentially, scrub plane, for knocking off waste or you know wood they don't need as quickly as possible. This plane has saved me so much time and all you need is a cheap, cheap Hirakana. Um, you know, any any Hirakana that is cheap can do this job, then camber the blade, make it nice and like circular cambered at the end. And you'll you'll get like a really good plane. It doesn't have to be that sharp either, it really doesn't it absolutely destroys the wood, which is fantastic for cutting down wood. Nagadai Kana for getting odds flat, getting the true. This plane is awesome. I absolutely love using this. And then finally, your finishing plane, a nice smoothing plane. Now, I might get some questions on, you know, where did I get these planes? Um, what do you look for in a plane? These aren't the most amazing planes. I'm going to say that off the, off the bat. These aren't the most expensive planes. A lot of these, are, in fact, all of these are vintage planes. These are not brand new planes I've been set up. Um, I really like to buy vintage planes because sometimes you get a bit better for your money. Um, and also, um, I've enjoyed kind of correcting planes and, and making them work for me. Now, I'm not going to. I'm going to say that a lot of the times you are getting problematic planes with vintage planes, so buying new can be good. However, if you buy from the right people, um, like there's a guy that uh, called I think his name. What's his name? Tokyo Tokyo Tools or something. I can't remember. I, if someone wants to know, comment below. I will find the name and post it later date. But um, he will do like great vintage planes that you can buy that are fully set up, come ready, and they might need a little bit of sharpened, but that's it. Anyway, that's my video on um, Japanese planes, which ones you need, why you need them. Um, and if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'll try the best uh, to answer them. Now, it's actually been quite a while since I've done woodworking. Um, I spent a lot of lockdown doing woodworking. You might have noticed from some of the terminology I've been using that I've kind of started to forget about the terminology. It's all coming back to me. <laughs> but I've I've uh, really enjoyed Japanese woodworking. I also have a lot of Western tools. Um, so please feel free to ask me any questions if I can answer them. Great. If I've done, you know, something you disagree with, please comment below, give advice. It's fantastic to, you know, give your opinion on things, especially if it's helpful. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching and um, have a great day.